I wished for someone to love. A husband, a child. I wished to make my home at Cora Farms. Be careful what you wish for. It might come true. in our lives in this hospital. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, I have a husband, you know. <laughs> At least I think I have. And one of these days, you're gonna start dating again. That's what I think it means. Thanks, but no thanks. You're not gonna even let me tell you about it? Nope, not interested. Anyway, you don't need my help. It's for you. Open it. For me? <laughs> What is it? Mmm, <gasps> it's nice. Who sent it? I don't know, but it's going right back. You can't do that to a heart patient. My name is Richard Corey. And you saved my life, remember? I was just doing my job. Sorry, but it's... It's against hospital policy. No, 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 I don't think so. I checked. Well, that's very generous, but it's against my policy. <sighs> All right. Well, uh, how about dinner, then? I'm going to be discharged tomorrow. Good, I I'm glad. But I'll have to say no. Well, then we have a hell of a problem. She won't say yes, and I can't take no for an answer. Sure thing. Okay. Oh, my lord. Uh, they're all from Mr. Can't Take No for an Answer. Oh, along with this. <sighs> you started me ticking again. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my, diamonds? <sighs> you know I can't accept this. I, I don't even know this man. Are you crazy? Maybe you think this is not what you want. But I know this is just what you need. When was the last time you were out with a man? Oh, don't answer that, because I know. I love you too, Delia. Kate! Crazy guy. Our new playroom. You know, you don't make it easy for someone to say thank you. Don't worry. No strings attached. But by any chance, you wouldn't be free for dinner tomorrow night, would you? Miss Stanley, I'm Mrs. Stewart, Mr. Corey's executive assistant. Please come out to the penthouse. His plane was delayed. He'll be with you in a moment. You look lovely. I hope you didn't mind coming up alone. My plane was held up. Does your doctor know you're working? Oh, no, no, no. It's a big secret. What else would I do? You could give that poor old heart a break. Oh. Thank you, Walter. I'm allowed one glass. You're cheating, and you know it. How do you feel? Right now, I feel very, very good. What you did was very generous. It's already made a difference. That's my ambition, make a difference. You believe me, don't you? Yeah, why well, wouldn't I believe you? Because a beautiful woman should never believe anything a man tells her. I'll take that as a warning. Smart lady. Now, listen, I asked you here early because I have a little surprise. There's something I want to show you. you're here. Someone once said never to believe anything a man tells you. <laughs> well, whoever told you that was an idiot. Come on. Where'd you keep your salad spoons? Mm, in the corner. How is it? It's incredible. Where did you learn to cook like this? Taught myself. My husband didn't like going out. Why not? Made school in his internship. There wasn't time for much else. Hmm. How long were you married? Eleven years. We met while I was still in nursing school. Well, I'm sorry it didn't work out. No, I'm not. Sorry. It didn't work out. So, what do you really want, Caitlin? Nothing complicated. Someone to love, I guess. You want kids? Mm-hmm. At least one. How about you? I have a son. His name is Eric. 
His mother died 12 years ago, cancer. I'm sorry. Eric and I are never really close. I don't know why. I hope. What? Hope someday I have a chance to do better. Shift tomorrow. Yeah. I guess you better go then. Yeah, I should go. Right this way, please. I have a lovely table just for you. Where is everybody? I thought it'd be crowded and noisy. Something's up. I never had live music before. No. Something special going on? Oh, yes. Something very special. Wait a minute. How did you do this? How could you have known? Well, known about what? Rick. This was supposed to be my treat. Did I make a mistake? Oh. I had my staff call every restaurant in town. I, 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 I just wanted this to be. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. It's all right. We're here now. Let's just... save me from myself. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Corey. I hope you'll be very happy, Mrs. Corey. Mrs. Stewart, please call me Caitlin. Thank you, Margaret. Congratulations, you know my wife. Uh, Caitlin, this is Calder Williamson, our district attorney. How do you do? Congratulations. And this questionable looking character is my lawyer, Preach Talbot. May I kiss the brat, or are you going to keep speechifying? Well, if I should know, you just get an injunction and do it anyway. <laughs> got to borrow this husband of yours. We've got some very serious toasting. Oh, baby, you look gorgeous. I'm so happy for you. Oh, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> well, congratulations, Mrs. Corey. I'm Barbara Winstead. I'm vice chair of the Parkland Hospital Committee. I understand that's where you and Richard met. That's right. I'm a nurse. Richard and I are old friends. I'm sure he told you we were once engaged. No, he never mentioned it, but enjoy yourself. This bride needs a break. Oh, 
Ted. Oh, hi. Congratulations, ma'am. Thanks. Get some cake? Oh, sure. The cake was great. Come on. Princess is jumping. Thanks, buddy. She's a beautiful ride, isn't she? I'm Kate. Caitlin, Corey. I know who you are. Excuse me. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, they're serving. Um, perhaps you'd like something to eat? I don't think so. The one thing you don't want to do with this crowd is get in the way when they're hungry. They don't even leave the bones. You speaking from experience? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could say that. Then you worked here a long time. Taking care of the horses, I mean. Oh, um, I don't exactly take care of them. They kind of take care of me. There you are. you met my son. <sighs> well, have you? I would have introduced you before the ceremony if you'd showed up on time. Well, I got here, didn't I? You think I deserve a congratulations? Congratulations, Dad. Thank you. Thank you very much. You want to come have a drink with us? No, actually, I'm going to go take care of Princess. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Corey... Well, you finally met. Mm -hmm. He seems sweet enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dropped out of every school I ever sent him to. Doesn't want to have anything to do with the business. Works as a bartender in some redneck dive. And rents a trailer out behind the place. Well, perhaps he's just learning to be independent. I'll bet you were the same way when you were his age. No, no, no. I didn't have the time or the luxury. I believed in the unmentionable, in having a goal. Well, there must be something he wants. Oh, yeah. Motorcycles and women. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yep. beautiful woman there. And you, my darling, were the richest man. <laughs> <laughs> my friends all think you're wonderful. They can't wait to hear about the honeymoon. Well, I was just thinking about that. Don't you think, Delia, deserves better than to hear about two weeks in a Paris hotel when I don't even let you out of the room? <laughs> Are you kidding? That's just what she wants to hear about. Well, then we might have a problem. Now, don't get angry, but I booked a cruise on a yacht on the Mediterranean. That means giving up my job. No, not necessarily. You could take a leave of absence. God knows you deserve one. 
Well, what if they won't release me? Well, what if I told you it was all arranged? All I did was talk to the hospital director, and I said, what if? And he just said, okay. So you are officially on leave. You can decide what you want to do when we get back. And, of course, you can always say no. Absolutely beautiful. Once belonged to Louis Napoleon with the original bullets. Thank you, sir. And your phone and fax messages. Darling, well, I gotta go back into town before I can rest. I'll see you in a while. If you're not too tired, we could go over the household arrangements. Oh, I'm fine. Mr. Corey has one of the most extensive small arms and military saddle collections in the country, which I've assisted him in cataloging. This is where Mr. Corey keeps his small valuables. He has the only key and generally never lets it out of his possession. If you'll come into my office, I could show you the menus for the week. Who prepares them? Normally, I do. I've also prepared a list of committees you'll be expected to sit on, Country club membership, civic organizations you sponsor. Red underline is a must. You're kidding. The others are optional. Mr. Corey has the only key and never allows anyone else to have it. However, an exception may be made in your case, as soon as you learn not to eat with your fingers. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, but you better stop. She's going to hear you. She's still downstairs. The social calendar of hers is impossible, Rick. I'm a working girl. The vacation's over. I thought we agreed that you weren't going to go back to work. No, I only agreed to a leave of absence, remember? Caitlin, you're my wife now. I can't have you working at an ordinary job. It'd be different if you edited a fashion magazine or something like that. Uh, Rick, I'm a nurse and a damn good one. Are you ashamed of that? No, no, of course not. You saved my life. But you can do so much more for the hospital now than you ever could before. You're raising money for that new pediatrics wing you said was so necessary. Who knows what else? You can't do that kind of thing working on a ward. Now, come on. Hey, I got to go to Bogota tomorrow, and I want to leave behind a very contented woman. Delia, no, I'm happy you called. You're pretty late. Oh, no, I gotta go. We got something on. A red on the line. Which is it this time? Versace or Dior? Where's Benson? Why? You gonna ask him for a job? Maybe. After I redo the budget? When did he start doing that? I don't care. You tell him he better not be there when I get there. I'm on my way now. 
Greg, what's wrong? I'm sorry, darling. We got an emergency. I got to fly to Peru. Well, you just got back. Can't this wait? Unfortunately, no. And I'm coming to... Caitlin, wait a minute. Where I'm going is too remote. It's too unsettled. I can't take you with me. Rick, the reason I left my job was so I could be with you. I'm sorry, not this time. Not any time. Is that what you mean? The answer is no. I'll call you when I get settled. If you need anything, you talk to Mrs. Stewart. I think you should wait until your father gets home. Mrs. Stewart, what are you worried about? I'm not going to hawk you. Well, you know how your father is about things you borrow and don't bring back. Well, I don't want to be responsible if any of these things aren't returned. It's all right, Mrs. Stewart. I'll take full responsibility. As you wish. Thank you. I think she was about to call the cops. You know, I really should be angry with you. Why haven't you answered any of our invitations? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Maybe next time. Where are you going with those? Kern Lake. Where is that? You wouldn't be interested. Why? I like lakes. I even like trees and bushes and shrubs. OK. It's about 30 miles north from here. Part of some property my father's going to develop. I don't even think he knows he owns it. You should check it out sometime. Hey, why not right now? What cabin is this? It's mine. I'm building it. All by yourself? That's right. Does Rick know about this? Nope. Squatter's rights. Quite an accomplishment. You mean for a bum like me? No, I mean without power tools. I think your dad would be very pleased to see this. I didn't do it to please him, which is impossible anyway. Have you ever tried? Look, my dad is only interested in getting what he wants. Or haven't you figured that out yet? I think you're misjudging him. He cares about you a great deal. Hey, you'd want to help. I don't want his help. Look, I got some more stuff to do, so uh, don't fall off. Hello? Caitlin, this is Richard. Walking out that way was wrong, and I apologize. There's just a lot at stake down here. It's all right, darling. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What have you been up to? Well, I saw Eric today. He came by the house. Looking for these? Up here at Top Store, remember? You nervous? I'm a nurse, remember? Oh, right, you nurse. 
Good dress. Ta-da! A little gift from your dad and me. Oh. You mean from you? No. It's late, Kate. Go home. Don't forget to order these. Hi. Hi. I called the house. They said you'd be here. How was some dinner? Nothing fancy, just some down home cooking. Sure. Took the with my dog. My mama left me. Guaranteed to put you on your ass. I'm driving. Suit yourself. On a man going. It is my only job. Morning, Parker. Good morning, madam. Did Derek come down yet? He left, madam, about an hour ago. One apprentice carpenter reporting for duty. All right, come here. All right, the Hold it tight. Good. Wash it first. No 
Nothing. Come on, you can tell me. You know, you're a real surprise, lady. I never figured my dad would connect with someone like you. No? Who'd you figure him to connect with? <laughs> oh, one of those society skeletons he usually dates. All bone structure, no belly. Hmm. Not your type, huh? So what is? Someone who's real. Someone who's not afraid to get their hands dirty. Calls, tell him you don't know when I'll be back. I expect you're busy all week. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Uh -huh. Up high, on the side, down below. Uh -huh. Too fast. <laughs> Sorry to break this up, but these little devils have to be fed. Come up. See ya. You all right, Kate? Yeah, I'm fine. Is something bothering you? No, I'm fine, really. <laughs> Kate. What are you doing here? I thought I'd take you to lunch. How do you know I'd be here? Called the house. They wouldn't tell me where you were, but I figured you'd be here. So you coming or not? Can't. I'm waiting for a call from your dad. And I'm waiting for you, Kate. Look, this isn't just gonna go away. You're fooling yourself if you think it will. Whatever you're thinking is wrong. I just want us to be a family. A family? It's a little late for that, don't you think? Stop it, Eric. I'm your father's wife. I'm gonna have his kids. His kids? My father can't have any kids. He's had a vasectomy, or didn't he tell you that? Run home. Whatever you say, Kate. You mean the most recent contributors? Uh, Richard must have a record of it. Uh, hold on.
I have to call you back. Uh huh. Bye. A client requests the following is a background check of the subject's past history, personality traits, and personal preferences. Neither can I. I'll call you back. What's the matter? I was looking for something in the office when I found this. You had me investigated, Rick. Researched. That's how you know about the restaurant. I needed to know who you were. No, you manipulated me. I wanted you, Caitlin. I'm in the habit of getting what I want. Is there something wrong with that? There is when you lie. And what is that supposed to mean? You told me you wanted to have kids. I meant that. You've had a vasectomy, Rick. Who told you that? What's the difference? It's the truth, isn't it? Damn minute. Go of me. Not until you hear me out. A vasectomy is reversible. You're a nurse. You ought to know that. So I can still have kids if I want them. If. When. I meant when. And every time we made love, believing you wanted us to conceive, it was a lie, wasn't it? That's not true. I was going to tell you. Honey, something more important always came up. My last trip was unavoidable. I intended to tell you everything. You're just going to have to believe that. Then help me to believe it. Help me not to feel like something you bought, like some object in one of your collections. A marriage is based on trust, Rick, not on investigations, phony promises, and lies. I'll be at my club. for you in Columbia. They're perfectly matched. I thought they would look wonderful around your neck. I'm sure you'll find room for them in one of your display cases. Okay. I was wrong. I apologize for that. I should have trusted you. Let's call the doctor tomorrow. We can try to start a family if that's what you want. I don't know what I feel. Maybe we shouldn't have kids. It doesn't matter to me. All I want is you. I missed you so much, Kate. I'm not even sure if we have a marriage anymore. What are you saying? I'm not happy, Rick. Maybe I'm the wrong person for you then. This isn't the life I expected. You can have a child or not. But divorce is not an option. I'm your wife, not a possession. This isn't a business deal. If you think that you can fight me, you are wrong. Mr. 
Mr. Corey called this morning from Washington. Did he want me to call him? No, he just wanted me to let you know he wouldn't be back this weekend. Yes. Mr. Corey, please. It's his wife. I'm sorry. Richard is in a meeting. Perhaps you'd like to leave a message? No, it's all right. to explain this fax to me. Did you think you could get away with it? Did you think you could make a fool out of me? Out of Richard Corey? What are you talking about? Don't you walk away from me! Don't you think I know what's been going on behind my back? I know where you've been! I know who you've been with! My son! My own son! You slut! <laughs> I'm gonna take care of him, and then I'm gonna come back here for you. Rick!
suffered severe head trauma. ETA 15 minutes. Ministry 02 now. Over. Miss Corey, I'm Detective Gardner. I'm sorry, this is just going to take a few minutes. There's one or two things I'd like to clarify. And now, I understand when you arrived at your stepson's cabin on Kern Lake, your husband was lying on the rocks below? Uh-huh, that's right. Why'd y'all drive out there separately? Uh... We had an argument. I, I tried to stop him, but he, he was out of control. An argument? Uh -huh. About what? He was angry because I'd been helping Eric. <laughs> uh, he and Eric weren't getting on too well. So it was just the three of you out there, your husband, his son, Eric, and you? Uh-huh. That's right. I know you already made a statement. Tell it to me again, okay? He wanted to kill me. He came after me with a gun. I got my hands on it. I shoved him off me. He lost his balance and went for the railing, and then he was gone. Came after you with a gun? What kind of gun? I don't know. I think it came from his gun collection. It it looked like an old Derringer or something. Why would he do something like that? Look, my father always loses it with me. He always has. He doesn't need a reason. Would it have anything to do with the fact you're making a play for his wife? She's a very beautiful lady. Look, I want a lawyer and I want one now. Do tell. Dr. Reed, Dr. I'm sorry, Caitlin. We couldn't save her. Kate. Come on, son. Come on, let's go. It's all right. It's all right, baby. Everything's going to be all right. What I need to know is what really happened. Richard believed that Eric and I were having an affair. Were you? No. Not an affair. But you were attracted to each other. Oh, preach. I tried to prevent it from happening. Richard and I were having problems. I asked him for a divorce, but he refused. Do you love Eric? I'll do anything I can to help him. Will you defend him, preach? All right, Caitlin, I'll take the case. But I have to warn you, it may get rough. Second floor, isn't it? Good morning, Calder. Sorry, Preach. Grand jury just delivered an indictment for murder one. We're talking self-defense here, and you know it. Richard pulled a gun on Eric, for Christ's sake. Well, we haven't found any gun, Preach. How hard are you looking? I've known Eric since he was a baby. He may be a little wild and unsettled, but he's not a killer. Where's your motive? Money. Pure and simple. Richard wouldn't give him any. Eric made it appear as though he was making a play for Kate. Mm -hmm. Richard took that bait. Congratulations, Senator. That is what you're running for, isn't it? We can forget bail now that the case is political. The prosecution will try to prove premeditation. All we have to raise is reasonable doubt, showing the facts he received that night set Richard off, that plus the gun, which is why we have to find it. Without it, we're running a one-legged race. Why haven't they found it yet? Maybe they're not looking that hard. The gun strengthens our case, not theirs. But they should have found it by now, if it exists. <laughs> French. Don't you believe, Eric? That's your job. Mine is to see who gets a fighting chance. Open fire! Open fire! 
We're doing everything we can to get you out of here. Talbot told me that they didn't find the gun yet. It was in his hand when he fell. Are you certain? Of course I'm certain, Kate. Do you think I'm making this stuff up? No, of course not. It has to be there. What about the facts? Mrs. Stewart gave a deposition denying she sent it. Who else could have sent it? She has a thing for my dad. This is her chance to get back at you. I want to know who you are. Because you're all I'm worried about. And, uh, I need to know that you still believe in me. Of course I do. We'll get through this, I know it. as long as I have you. Quiet, please. The court is now in session. State of North Carolina versus Eric Michael Corey. Honorable Judge Eubanks presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, the people will prove that Eric Michael Corey willfully and intentionally murdered his father, Richard Corey, in cold blood and for the single and express purpose of getting his hands on the money in Richard Corey's estate. Money which he desperately needed and which his father would not provide. We will prove beyond a reasonable doubt that his plan was deliberate and executed with care and premeditation and that it stemmed from a long-standing hatred of the victim, regardless of the fact that he was his own flesh and blood. So, after carefully dredging the lake bed, you were unable to find even a trace of the gun that the defendant described. That's right. You're a witness. Detective, the defendant described the gun in question as an antique Derringer four-shot pistol once belonging to Napoleon III. Is uh, that correct? I believe so, sir. Now, this weapon was normally kept in a locked gun cabinet in Richard Corey's home and was an important part of his collection. As far as I can determine. But the cabinet was locked when you got there, and the gun in question was missing, correct? Yes, sir. How many keys were there? Two, as far as we can determine. One was kept in a safety deposit box. So there was only one of the key, the one shown here. Apparently. Can you tell us who had exclusive possession of that key? Richard Corey. And where did you find this famous key? It was in the victim's pocket. In the victim's pocket. Then the only possible conclusion that could be drawn is that the deceased took it from his gun collection and had it with him on the night he died. Is it possible, detective, that the reason you have not found the gun in question is because you aren't really looking for it? Objection, Your Honor. Withdrawn. No further questions. Mr. Stewart, how long have you worked for the Corey family? Seventeen and a half years. Do you recognize this? Yes, sir. That's the fax Mr. Corey received when he was in Washington. That's the one he brought back with him the night that he was killed. Yes. Your Honor, the state would like to enter this as prosecution 14. Take a moment, if you would, please, and examine this. And tell us if you sent that fax to Mr. Corey. I know I didn't. Any fax that I send has a code on it, and this doesn't have any. So someone else sent it. Someone who could have had access to your office. The defendant, perhaps. Objection, conjecture, and prejudicial. Your Honor, the defendant has visited the Corey estate on numerous occasions. He used to live there. There's no dispute about that? 
I'll allow it. Yes, it's a possibility. As well as anyone else who lived in the house. Mrs. Stewart, were you present during the period when the defendant's mother was living? Yes. Would you tell us how she died? She had a fatal reaction to her medication. Mrs. Stewart, isn't it a fact that the defendant's mother committed suicide by overdosing on sleeping pills? Objection. This witness has no expertise to draw this conclusion. Your Honor, I have the coroner's report which corroborates her testimony, which I intend to enter into evidence at the proper time. All right. Overruled. Now, Mrs. Stewart, is it not also a fact that Mrs. Corey wanted out of that marriage and that Mr. Corey would not give her a divorce, and as a result of that, she grew more and more depressed? Yes, I believe that is true. Then how would you characterize the defendant's attitude toward his father after his mother's death? Mrs. Stewart, you are still under oath. Eric hated his father. He blamed him for his mother's death. Silence. This court will recess until 10 o'clock Monday morning. Got to have that gun. Without it, we're cooked. You can't do this, Preach. Yes, you can. Come on now. Did yeah. yeah. you hear it, your mother? Did your husband suspect you were having an affair? Is that why we attacked his son? So the gun was under the house all the time. It must have landed in one of the drains. Then been washed down during the recent rains. That's why the police couldn't find it. Now they'll have to believe him. Only we may have a custody problem which could make this evidence inadmissible since no one was with you when you found it. Oh, come on, Preach. There must be something we can do. There is. We have to establish doubt in the minds of the jury that Eric committed murder. It means putting you on the stand. And the minute I do, I become your deadliest enemy. Is the defense ready, Mr. Talbot? It is, Your Honor. The defense has only one witness, Mrs. Caitlin Corey. Please raise your right hand, put your left hand on the Bible. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing about the truth, help you guys? I do. Mrs. Corey, will you tell the court how you discovered your husband's gun when the police and the defense's own divers could not? Well, I realized that it could have slipped into one of the drains and been washed down during the recent rains. So I, I, I searched under the deck and found it hidden amongst the rocks. Why didn't you notify the police that you were going to search the area so they could be present when you found it? I didn't think about it. I, I didn't go there to search. It just happened when I saw that the girders were blocked. How did you know about the uh, drainage system, Miss Corey? Are you an architect? 
No, but I, I helped with some of the building of the cabin. Helped to build? Would you explain that? Eric was building the cabin single-handed, and I, I merely helped sometimes. And where was your husband at this time? On a business trip out of the country. So it was just the two of you alone together at the cabin. <laughs> Mrs. Corey, did you plant this gun at the lake? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, I don't think so. In point of fact, Mrs. Corey, I intend to prove that you are the last person this jury should believe. Oh, my God. Your Honor, I move to declare Ms. Corey a hostile witness. Silence, or I'll clear the court. Counsel will approach. What the hell are you trying to pull, Talbot? She's your witness. She's my only witness and the key to this case, Your Honor. I'm willing to let him play out his hand. Since the prosecution has no objection, I'll declare accordingly. Proceed. Mrs. Corey, you knew of your husband's violent temper, did you not? Yes. Not only knew, but experienced it firsthand. He struck you, did he not? Yes. So that the very allegation that you might be having a relationship with his son, the son who hated and constantly humiliated him, would be bound to send him into a violent, uncontrollable rage, a rage in which he might well wish to commit murder, even upon his own flesh and blood. I don't know. Well, I think you do know. I think you maneuvered father and son to suit your own purposes, exactly like a black widow about to devour its mate. Only this time, you had the whole family to snack on. Mr. Talbot, this is not a summation. The jury will disregard the last remark. I stand corrected, Your Honor. Mrs. Corey, you worked at the cabin, didn't you? You even helped build that drain system. Yes. Yet you waited until the prosecution had completed its case before making an attempt to recover the gun. Why? I don't know. I think you knew full well that finding the gun the way you did, coming so late in the trial, would look like a vain attempt to save the defendant and be believed by no one. That's not true. That's not true. Mrs. Corey, what motivated you to marry your husband. Um, I married Rich because I, I believed I loved him. Yet, within less than two years of your marriage, you were having an affair with his son. Is that not true? Oh. Silence. Yeah. One more outburst and I'll clear the court. Witness will answer the question. No, not an affair. All right, then. Exactly what is it called when you sleep with your husband's son? No, stop it. Did you hear me? The defendant will be silent or be restrained. Continue. Mrs. Corey. Sit down. Did you not plan to seduce the defendant in order to pit father against son in a deliberate attempt to gain total control of Richard Corey's estate? No, I did not. Mrs. Corey, did you have sex with the defendant Eric Corey? Yes or no? Stop a bitch! Oh, 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 stop a bitch! The defendant will be removed from this courtroom. Yes. Continue. I ask you again, Mrs. Corey, did you have sex with the defendant, Eric Corey, at the cabin on Kern Link the night of April 19th? Answer the question. Yes. And was your husband informed of this liaison? Yes. In fact, did he not rush back that very night? 
Did he not confront you with an accusation of your infidelity and incest? Did he not then immediately rush from the house in a violent rage in an attempt to punish his son? Yes. No further questions. Ladies and gentlemen, there is your murderer. Suspense grips this city tonight as the jury retires to deliberate in the Richard Corey murder trial, a city still agog with the effects of the testimony from the single defense witness, Mrs. Caitlin Corey, who in a spectacular twist revealed that she and the murdered industrialist's son... I know how you must hate me, but I came to tell you that the jury's deadlocked. It looks as though we have a mistrial. Call has indicated that there's not enough evidence to retry for either murder one or manslaughter. So you see, Caitlin, we won. Now I have to ask you to forgive me. You disliked me from the beginning, didn't you? No. I just didn't think you were a suitable wife for Mr. Corey. I could say more, but I've always been loyal to this family. That's very strange, considering your testimony. I told the truth. But not all of it. Oh, you and I both know that. Is this some kind of blackmail? Mr. Corey left me very well provided for. I don't need anything from you. I don't think you really want to know the truth. <sighs> what truth? That you had me followed and traced my calls? I wouldn't demean myself, not even for Richard. What I said at the trial was true. I never sent him anything. But the facts did come from this house. The phone records prove that. If you didn't send it, how did Mr. Corey get the information? Unless it came from you, only one other person could have sent it. Someone who knew this house intimately and had access to that fax. Someone who spent his entire life spitting in his father's face. Police. Yes. Eric. You can't prove it, can you? Well, why don't we ask him? You saw Eric here that day, didn't you, Teddy? Oh, don't worry. He would never testify against his hero. Would you, Teddy? Goodbye, Mrs. Corey. I hope you're both very happy. Okay, everybody. What's the matter, Caitlin? You seem worried about something. 
I just keep listening for that knock at the door. Like I'm expecting the police at any moment. No chance of that. There'd have to be some pretty strong evidence to persuade the DA to retry. Stuart came by. She's still claiming she didn't send the fax. Then who could have sent it? Great way we're cat. Well, you're up early. I wanted to ride before breakfast. Okay. So what do you want to do later? I thought I'd drive over to see Delia. She's having some friends over. Well, what about those press vultures? I'll be careful. I'll see you later. Hello. Hospital. Can I speak to Mrs. Corey, please? She called about the volunteer schedule. Yeah, um, Mrs. Corey won't be participating for a while, but she'll call you when she's available. Thank you. Hi, it's Eric. How you doing, Eric? I'm fine, thank you. Listen, Kate won't be coming in today. How's the ride? Terrific. Good. Before I forget, Delia called. She had to cancel. Did the hospital call me to give them the dates I'll be available? Yeah, actually they did. I told them that you wouldn't be coming in for a while. Why do you do that? Because it's too soon. You'd be dodging reporters every minute. I can't spend every minute in this house. Not even with me? Oh, what's the matter? We went through hell so we could be together. I need you, Caitlin. I feel like I'm losing you. I'm with you, Eric. I just need room to breathe. That's fine. I'm sorry that I got so possessive. I've always hated this place. Look, I got an idea. Why don't we go up to the lake? We could take a swim. We could even stay the night. It's too soon. Okay, I know it's been hard. But that's our special place. We can't let what happened destroy that.
Yes, jump it, Eric. for the probate and the police still have the key. Do you know if there's another one? Not the Noah. Look, Brian's too drunk to drive, so I'm gonna run him home. You okay? Yeah. Just a little party diet, I guess. Yeah. I know what you mean. Well, I'll see you soon. going on? I'm going away for a few days. Why? I need some time by myself. Time to think things over. All right, now you just hear me out, all right? Now, I know that things haven't been all that great between us, Kate. We have to expect that after everything we've been through. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to Hawaii. The company has a ranch there. It's remote. It's quiet. We'll be all alone. No one will bother us. Okay. We'll go. That's... You're right. That's... That's just what I need. Great. So, I have some more arrangements to make. I've already ordered a plane. We'll leave tomorrow at night. You'll love it. It's Caitlin Corey. What's the matter, Caitlin? You sound terrible. I found a duplicate key to Rick's gun case hidden up at Eric's cabin. When I asked him about it, he lied, said he didn't have one. Well, maybe he was just trying not to complicate things. Listen, Preach, Mrs. Stewart didn't send the fax. Eric did. The stable boy saw him here the day it was sent. Don't you see? He knew what Rick would do. Don't take any chances. Get out of the house now. Well, what about what I just told you? It's circumstantial. We'd need something more solid, something that showed intent. But let me worry about that. Just get over here as soon as you can. Okay. Push the bolt all the way through. Now tighten it up. There you go. What he do when he found out about us, and then you removed the bolts from the railings. You don't know what you're talking about. You deliberately murdered him. I have the evidence right here. That ain't evidence. It is when I use it to support my testimony. 
A wife can't testify against her husband, Kate. You think I'd marry you now? After this? Knowing you planned it from the beginning? Not from the beginning. Only after I fell in love with you. I had to have you, Kate. Don't you understand that? You did it for the money, not for me. Yes, Kate, I needed money. So I could keep you the way he did. And give you the kind of life that you wanted. That's the reason you married him in the first place, isn't it? I loved him. I never cared about his money. But he didn't want a wife. He wanted a trophy, someone he could display. And you're just like him. I am nothing like him, Kate. Look, he wanted to possess you. I only want to love you. It don't matter. Not now. Look, we can go wherever we want. We never have to come back here. It's too late, Eric. I can't let you go, Kate. Stop it, Eric. What am I supposed to do? Because I can't live without you. You tell me what I'm supposed to You've do. You've got to tell him the truth. Give me a picture, Kate. Kate, you give me a Stop picture, it. Kate. Stop it. Good afternoon, Mr. Talbot. Uh, Mrs. Corey's in a meeting. Would you like your drink in the library, sir? Thank you, Barker. Thank you, Barker. You're most welcome. And finally, the plans for expanding the new children's wing as part of the Richard Corey Pavilion will be ready for our final approval at next meeting. And that's the last item, so I think we can close. Mm, Thank great. you both. Thank you, Kate. Mr. Talbot is here. Oh, good. Tell him I'll be right down. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Preach. David. Good to see you. Thank you, Mary. I'll take over now. Hi, darling. You ready for your ice cream? 